The Rolling Strut Slide Rail is a versatile, heavy-duty, linear trench lining system capable of supporting trenches up to 9 metres deep and 12 metres wide in most types of ground. The system comprises of a series of posts and struts assembled to form H-frames, which are installed into the ground at 4 metre centres, into which plates are inserted to line the trench walls. The H-frames are strutted apart by uniquely designed rolling struts, which move up and down the posts to aid installation and provide large clearances, allowing long pipes and culverts to be lowered into the trench. Due to the nature of this equipment and the size of the excavations it's likely to be used in, it should always be used in conjunction with a temporary works design. It is essential that adequate lifting equipment is used for lifting the heavy and cumbersome components and sub-assemblies. We recommend that two excavators are used for installation of the equipment, with one being at least 25 to 30 tonne capacity. Prior to using the equipment, it is essential for the supervisor to be familiar with it by first thoroughly reading the user guides and design drawings supplied by Groundforce with the higher documentation. The installation starts with the first bay extents being marked out and pre-excavated to typically one metre deep. The trench in this demonstration is only 2.5 metres wide by 4 metres deep, but the same installation principles apply for larger digs. The slide rail system is installed in 4 metre long bays. Whilst pre-excavation is taking place, the first H-frame is assembled using the second excavator. A sliding lifting device is included in the installation kit to assist with handling of the 1.5 tonne, 5.5 metre long posts. For this narrow demonstration trench, the rolling struts have been pre-assembled prior to delivery. If struts over 3 metres wide are required, they are bolted together on site with a simple flange and 8 bolt connection. The M30 10.9 bolts and nuts must be carefully torqued up in a diagonal sequence to 1,000 foot-pounds using the torque wrench supplied in the toolkit. Do not use lower grade bolts in these flange connections. The strut is laid out, preferably on hard standing, to allow the posts to be slid into the locating channels at either end. Once inserted, they are located in place with limit pins through the slots in the posts. These pins prevent excessive movement of the strut carriages relative to the posts. The strut rollers are slightly tapered, so it is important to install them with the arrow on the side of the carriage pointing upwards on the vertical H-frame. The assembled frame is lifted with a larger excavator, or crane if available, and lowered into the dig. Once it is resting on the base and supported in position, the upper limit pins are removed to allow the second excavator to push or hammer the posts down to anchor them in place. It is essential that care is taken to install the first frame plumb and square as subsequent frames will use this as the datum point moving along the trench. The first plates are slid into the channels in the posts and lowered to sit on the base of the dig. Here, the second excavator is used to support the posts, as it is not possible to tow in the posts significantly into the hard ground at this site. The plate spacing is checked before proceeding to install the second H-frame. Once located in the plates, the lower limit pins are removed to allow the strut to be lowered onto the base of the excavation to give the frame greater rigidity whilst the posts are hammered down to refusal. Driving beams are placed on the plates. Spoil is removed from within this first bay. The posts and plates are driven down progressively. 
driving beams must be used to prevent damage to the plates whilst hammering them down. Any gaps behind the plates must be continually backfilled and the end of the trench battered back to maintain safety for operatives around the outside of the excavation. Once the excavation reaches the depth of the first plate, further plates are inserted into the adjacent runners in the posts to pass in front of and below the first plate. The excavation can then be deepened with these plates being pushed down in a similar manner after transferring the driving beam. Care must be taken when hammering the inside plate down. The posts are also taken down with the dig so that they are always ahead of the plates. Once the depth of the dig is reached, the strut is lifted into the final position as specified on the scheme drawings and located in place with the limit pins. Excavation of the second bay commences. Plates and subsequent H-frames are progressively installed. The installation continues in a similar sequence until all bays have been installed. Once the plates are down to depth, it is essential that edge protection is used to prevent falls. The Ground Force Edge Safe system, comprising of a series of clamps, supporting posts and mesh guards, is installed to the upper plates. Three metre high extension posts can be used to allow support for trenches up to nine metres deep. The pre-assembled H-frame extension is located onto the lower posts and the posts are locked together with a special pin. Backfilling is basically a reversal of the installation process, progressively lifting the lower panels out as backfilling proceeds. The struts and posts are finally removed and backfilling completed. All components are disassembled, cleaned and stacked awaiting collection. Care is needed to recover and return all pins and components to avoid unnecessary charges being incurred. Please observe the following points while using this equipment. Always locate underground services before excavating. Prepare a lifting plan, assess weights correctly and use appropriately certified lifting equipment during installation and removal. Always use two excavators or a crane and an excavator to install this equipment. Be thoroughly familiar with the user guide and design drawings supplied with the equipment. Use only designated lifting points for chain attachment. Ensure limit pins are used correctly. Torque up the strut extension bolts adequately. Use the driving beam to protect the plates. Keep personnel clear of the excavator slewing zone and always use a qualified banksman. Inspect all components for signs of defects at the start of every shift. Use edge protection to prevent falls. Do not use pins and bolts other than those supplied by ground force. Do not move into an unsupported area at any time. Do not use excessive force during installation and removal. Do not remove components without adequate support from backfill material being in place. Ground for Shawco. Be safe and sure.